Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1115, the gift pivot panels, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. The gift pivot panels is the fifth in this series. They have been extremely popular for us, and I think it's because they're so versatile and easy. You can add your pivot panels into a card. You choose your card size. So an A2 long is a particularly nice size card for all of the pivot panels. But then they're also designed to work really well with some of our other die sets. So if you own the twist panel die set, you can combine that with pivot panels to make those double dynamic pop-ups. Pivot panels also fit in the tag books. Okay, the pivot panels themselves is just a single piece. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. And today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. The die has done all the cutting and the scoring, and as with any of the pivot panels, the first step is to find the center fold in both directions. So I fold that to the back, and then I turn around and reverse it and fold to the front. And then I return everything to where I started again. That was just about finding the folds. Okay, going out to one end, I follow the rounded corners, and then I'll be able to identify where the tabs are. So there's a little tab right here that folds to the back. Then there's a score line that lines up with that that goes right through the row of presents, and then another tab above that. And the last fold on this side is the little rectangular tab out on the end of the row. And everything comes back out to flat again, and I turn the piece around, I do the exact same thing on the other side. So there's a tab, I start with the tab, then I go right between the two presents, then I do the final tab, and then I do that little rectangular tab out on the end. This is now ready to be installed inside a card. Now what size card you choose. For today's card, I'm going with an A2 long, so 11 inches by four and a quarter on the cardstock with some paper panels four by five and a quarter. So you just line up the center fold of the pivot panels right over the center fold of the card, and you can choose your location. I've just decided to center it top to bottom. And then keeping that in place, I want to add adhesive on the right-hand side to my three tabs. So the adhesive goes on top of the tabs. I'm using my favorite glue, which is Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle, and we do sell both of those items on our website. Keeping everything nice and flat with the center folds lined up, now all I want to do is kick those three tabs under and attach them to the card. Now in the process of kicking them under, don't let them accidentally pin down your presence. Your presence should still be up. And I can see that my bottom tab didn't completely adhere. So let me give that another little press. But then once that sets up, if I lift a little bit, you can see I've got those three tabs kicked under and glued to the card. Okay, switching to the other end, I'm doing the exact same thing. So the three tabs get the adhesive on top. Then you just carefully kick them under and attach them to the card. Now for training, I just start to fold the card a little bit and I see what happens. So if in the center I've got mountains top and bottom and then a valley in between the presents with mountains out on the ends of the presents, then it's already doing the right thing. Now let's say I had mountain, mountain, mountain in the middle, then I need to make sure that it's mountain, valley, mountain. So once you get it started like this, you can just close the card. It'll do all the training itself. But this is what you're looking for, basically back and forth folds. I had a little bit of ink on my fingers and didn't notice, and I got a little smudge on my paper. And of course, it's right on the lightest part of the pattern paper. So never being a fan of starting over, I've just decided on a design choice. A little washi tape right through there. It'll just basically add a new interesting stripe to the plaid. And then just to make it look intentional, I'll put a random stripe on the right side of the card as well. And then later on, one up on the pivot panels. I chose four colors to cut gifts and bows and tags out of using the decorator pieces in the set, and I just picked those colors based on the pattern paper. So I've decided just to cut every piece out of all four colors. So I have two colors stacked on top of each other on each stack. That way I really only have to go through the machine a couple times to get everything in all four colors. So make sure you keep your packaging with the die set so that you can always refer back to it to see which presents go in which location and what combination they are to give you that perfect shadow. So it was designed with specific presents in each spot. Now, you can go rogue and just do your own thing, but if you want to have that perfect shadow, you'll be wanting to refer back to that packaging to see which combination of present and bow fits in each spot. 
but basically you have two size presents, a ribbon cross, a tag, and three different bows. And just depending on how you combine those, you get different looks to your presents. So one thing that's kind of nice is just to add the tag to some of the presents. If you do that, what I like to do is just glue it on there and then pierce a hole down through the tag and then tie it on using some twine. So a short present with the big loopy bow is what goes in spot one. The ribbon cross works perfectly on the tall presents, but when you want to use it on the short one, you'll have to trim the long side so they fit. So I just still glue it right on there, and then I just take my scissors and trim off the excess. My presents are assembled, so now I can glue them on in their respective spots, just basically centering them in the opening, making sure on this one that I don't get the ribbon across the fold. Same thing with the one next to it. So just watch the fold lines so you don't get ribbons down in your valley folds. I decided this would be a thank you card and I did cut the thank you die into two pieces so that I could arrange them the way that they fit. Then one of our crosshatch rectangles cut out of a cream color on the right side as a place to write my personal greeting. I like to just use my leftover colors and materials on the front of the card. So I still had some pieces and parts to make presents, some more crosshatch rectangles, the same pattern paper and washi tape, and then I just glue that right onto the front of my card. My finished card is just a standard A2. It folds down pretty flat. I don't even think it'll require extra postage, just needs a regular A2 size envelope. Okay, so that is the card installation using the gift pivot panels. And next I will show how you would use it with our sold separately twist panel die set so that you can make a double dynamic pop-up like this. On die cutting, I've started with the gift pivot panels again, and then using a die from the twist panel set, I've cut a set of two panels. Now for this type of card, those need to become individual panels. So just using my scissors, I remove the tab and then cut up the middle. The training of the folds on the gift pivot panels is identical to if you were doing a regular card installation. So that means the center fold gets folded in both directions, and then the tabs out on the end just get folded in one direction to the back, and then everything gets back out to flat again. And do that on both sides, so exactly what we did before. Okay, putting that piece down flat again, I'm going to fold in the last present and make sure that my little tabs are sticking out straight. Then I'm going to take that panel and I'm going to turn it like a book and lay it flat on top of the other panel. That way I can line up the rounded corners and make sure that I get a good placement. Then I just need some adhesive on those two tabs, fold them over and press them down. Since my paper is metallic, I'll just clip those to give that glue a little extra chance to dry. Then I'm just going to turn the piece around and repeat the process. The final present gets folded in, the panel goes face down on top of the stack, I add some adhesive onto my two tabs and fold them over and onto the back of that panel, and then since I'm using metallic cardstock, I'll just use my clip so that I don't have to hold it while it dries. Okay, opening up that first side, I can attach my final tab, but instead of using glue, since I'm using metallic cardstock, I think I'll go ahead and switch to a glue dot, a dry adhesive, especially since I'm gluing metallic to metallic. So I'll just fold in that glue dot so that it stays within the tab, then fold the tab under and press it to the panel. Okay, removing my clips on the other side and then unfolding the present, I do the same thing on this side now, which is to get some adhesive, and I'll use dry just because, like I say, I'm doing metallic cardstock, in that final tab, fold it in so it stays within the limits of the tab, and then just underneath and press it to the panel. Okay, for training. Right now, my panel set will just fold like a regular panel set, but what I want to do is get the double pop-up going. So that means I want a mountain between my final two presents, then a valley in the middle, then a mountain on the final two on the other end. And then once I get that started, I should be able to carefully just collapse the whole piece and it'll work all those double back and forth accordions. Okay, then I just need to add those decorative presents. And I decided to also add some trims from our cake trims die set. 
Okay, following the assembly instructions for the twist panel die set, I have my top fold card. It's five inches wide by six inches tall in the closed position. There is an assembly video on that if you need a refresher or if you're new to the twist panel. From here, it is regular twist panel assembly. So that means some adhesive on the arm that has the corner to it, not the one that has the taper, but the one that has the corner and also has the notch. The adhesive starts at the notch, goes out to that corner, and then you just make sure that the center of the panel is right over the fold of the arm. And that first time I fold it, of course, I give it just a little bit of help to learn that twist. Once again, a very simple lead-in to this card, just using the crosshatch ovals this time, and then our big Merry Christmas die on the inside, and again, more of those cake trims. A 5x6 card is one of my favorite sizes when you want a little bit larger card because it will fit in an A7 envelope, but you just need that piece of 12x12 cardstock to make the card itself. You don't have to patch two pieces together as you would with a top fold 5x7. But you can do smaller cards as well. Here is the twist panel and gift pivot panels in a birthday card. And then I have several cards by our very talented design team to share. This first one by Francis Byrne, using the twist panel and the gift pivot panels together in a holiday card. Here's a holiday card by Lois Bach, and I absolutely love how she incorporated the office charms into this card. It's always fun to mix our dies with your favorite stamps from other companies, and here's a great one by Fran Sabad. I mentioned that the pivot panels will fit in our tag book, so here's a great version by Kelly Booth. Helen Cryer made this card, and I just love the bright colors. Now here are a couple of cards by Karen Aiken where she's not using the gift pivot panels to hold presents, but actually just swapping out for whatever embellishments she chooses. Frances Byrne also used the gift pivot panels generically by spelling out the word coffee instead of adding presents. Lois Bach got very clever and cut the structure of the pivot panels out of a clear material so that the presents just appear to be floating. And then Lois again with a doubled gift pivot panel in this awesome living room scene, you can see that by doubling it she has 10 presents. The gift pivot panels die set will be available on our website as well as a lot of your favorite online and local retailers starting mid-November 2019. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenburniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.